Hi everyone, thanks for jumping on here. Uh, this is the first Barrel Proof Baseball podcast. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of an introduction to what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, a little bit of history behind it, um, kind of where, where I see this going, what my hopes are for this, and um, you know, just hopefully give you a little bit of insight into what this is gonna look like over you know, the course of however long this is able to go. Um, this whole idea kind of started for me because it, bourbon was really interesting to me. Um, starting in the beginning of 2020, I was really trying to engulf myself in reading books. Um, you know, once we got shut down with COVID, the opportunity to be home and you know read and take in as much information as I could was was really nice. Um, but I got I got to a point where I was reading a whole bunch of books and, and a lot of them were on leadership or baseball type things, things that would really help me with with my career. And everything kind of started blending together and everything started to be really the same thing, just said in a different way. Um, I started working with a guy named Lucas Jaden, who wrote Wind in the Dark. Um, Lucas was outstanding for me. Our conversations always stemmed towards, you know, really taking introspective looks at myself and making sure that I'm doing things that are fulfilling for me and, you know, that I'm maximizing what I'm capable of doing and the things that I want to do and, and accomplishing things probably outside of baseball, which are which is something I've really never done before. I've never had the interest in doing that. So when he pushed me into that, I was obviously a little, little scared, but he was right and that was something I needed to do. So uh, bourbon was really interesting to me. I, I like bourbon, um, but the, the process of it, everything about it was really interesting. So I started getting some bourbon books, um, started listening to some podcasts, some YouTube channels of you know guys that were talking about bourbon, and I, I just I really enjoyed it. And so one of Lucas's challenges for me was to like start writing, you know, start writing about bourbon. And so I did. I, I started a Medium account and kind of started writing this blog po these blog posts about bourbon. Um, you know, just different things about anything bourbon related or whiskey or whatever. You know that that I was uh, thinking at the time or, or something that interested me. So. Started writing, and you know, Lucas was like, "Hey, you need to you need to post it." I'm like, no, I, I don't know. I'm not ready to to post that anywhere to be seen. And he goes, "No, you need to do it." And so I I did, and it scared me to death posting my very first blog onto Twitter and LinkedIn. And once I did it, I was like, "Wow, that was pretty cool," you know. And, and then I did it again, and then like by the third time, I really didn't kind of hesitate to to do it. Uh, it just it was so beneficial for me to do the writing. Um, especially about a topic that was not about baseball because that's been the topic for me that I've really always dove into and it's really taken over my life and, and for, for so long. So doing something and digging in and learning about something new outside of baseball, it was very fulfilling for me and I really enjoyed it. In the course of doing that, I was having a conversation when I was at work one day with one of our other coaches. We were sitting in the outfield and having a conversation, and you know, we were talking about just this whole bourbon and baseball idea. Um, because I, I told him I had found that a lot of the guys that we were coaching with, or that I have coached with, or played with, uh, are always talking about you know bourbon bottles or whiskey bottles that they were buying. You know, they're posting pictures on social media. So I realized that there was a lot of guys that were involved in baseball that were really into whiskey. I thought that was kind of cool. So I started reaching out to some people in the whiskey industry just to kind of get to know them a little bit, ask some questions. Um, we did a, a really cool virtual live tasting um, that, that was just incredible. And it, it just opened up all these different you know, thought processes about whiskey in general. And so in, in this conversation I was having at work one day, you know, I was explaining to him how these things were going and he basically said like why don't you try and put something together combining the two and and so i you know put that on the paper and, and started to come up with some ideas of how i could make that happen and i realized that you know a lot of a lot of baseball guys are really good storytellers they've got a lot of stories whether it's you know in the game or just being around the environment um, people that they've come across in the game there's just there's always cool stories coming from guys that are involved in baseball and I found that to be true for people in the whiskey industry as well, that the way that they got into the industry and what their role is in the industry and, you know, be it like a brand ambassador or if they're into distilling, maybe even in the farming process, um, maybe it's a marketing thing or an intern or whatever it might be. But there's so many different roles that these people have in the whiskey industry that um, it, it was just, it was fascinating to me. And, 
talking to those guys and seeing that they had interest in baseball and the baseball guys having an interest in whiskey, I thought, yeah, this is, that's a great idea. Like, I, let's, let's see what we can do. Um, so I created a Facebook group um, called Barrel Proof Baseball. And, you know, mainly Barrel Proof is you know, a lot of, wh there's whiskeys that are barrel proof, meaning they're uncut with water and they're coming out at a higher proof. And um, I'm not that creative and there was barrel with baseball and, you know, why not put them together? And uh, so I started this Facebook group and it's all, you know, baseball guys or guys that played baseball, coach baseball, whatever it is. And, you know, then guys will start inviting other guys and, you know, it's not a huge group. We've got about 150 guys in there and, but it's just a lot of fun. It's guys with common interests, sharing our common interests. And we just have, you know, great banter about what we're drinking. And, you know, you start seeing guys connect with one another that weren't connected beforehand. And you kind of see how baseball and whiskey connects people. And to me, like, that's the whole point of, of whiskey. You can have an expensive bottle, but it doesn't really mean anything if you're not sharing it with people and, and, you know, and making that occasion special based off of who you're with, not necessarily what you're drinking. So the occasion and the company make it better, not just what you're drinking. So seeing that that is what's you know, bringing people together, I've, I've really come to enjoy that. Um, so I decided to get this, this podcast going because I felt like there could be some really cool stories being told back and forth. Um, so that's, that's kind of my goal is to get these people telling stories, you know, make it a conversation over a glass of whiskey. You know, we're not going to turn it into uh, a set interview. Obviously, there's going to be questions regardless of which, inter, uh, which, which industry you're in. Um, I think there's questions that anybody would love to hear answered, especially how they got into whatever industry they're in and kind of their journey through it but especially where they're at now and just talking about it, maybe talking about the future of industries or wherever the conversation goes. But I, I want it to be a, a conversation over a glass of whiskey. So that's kind of my, my big goal. In addition to that, um, I'm, I'm gonna have bottle reviews and every bourbon or whiskey YouTube channel or podcast has bottle reviews. And I know I'm gonna do the exact same thing because people wanna hear different opinions on bottles. The issue is what I see with people who have their YouTube channels is they go and they find the unicorns. They're looking for, you know, the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection or the Pappy or the OFC, um, you know, the Michter's 20, 25 year, whatever it is, like bottles that are really, really hard to come by. Uh, whether it's, you know, they're allocated, they're not released on the shelves, you can't find them, or they're out there, you just have to pay an arm and a leg to get them. Most people aren't that interested in whiskey or bourbon to pay, you know, quadruple the MSRP just to say they have that that whiskey. You know, guys on these these Facebook groups or, or Instagram groups, they're posting all of their pictures of all the tons of of um, unopened bottles that they've got sitting on their shelf at home, and it's like, well, that's, that's cool, you have that, but that's just a decoration. You know, the whiskey's supposed to be drank. There's a story behind it of how it got there drink it, like enjoy it. Don't just put it up there for a decoration. So, you know, my goal with this is to review bottles that people can drink, that you can walk into BevMo or Total Wine or just a local liquor store, and it's gonna be sitting there on the shelf. Something you can pick up, it's affordable, it's good, um, and it's available. Like a, a bottle of bourbon that's not available really doesn't matter if you can't get it. Yes, I have a list of bottles that I would love to find one day, um, but some of these bottles are just so expensive and they're so rare that I'm most likely never going to have the opportunity to have it. And that's fine. There's so many bottles and you know, a value like budget type range. There's some in just that mid range that you can really enjoy. And then you can spend a little bit more and get a really nice bottle of, of whiskey. And there's all sorts of kinds of, of whiskey you can get between, you know, your bourbons, your American whiskeys, your rye's, you know, there's high proofs that are out there. There's Irish whiskey, obviously Scotch, Japanese, Canadian whiskeys. I mean, there's a ton of whiskeys that you can get and you got to figure out what you like, but if it's not available or especially not available at a price point that you're comfortable with, then there's no point in me watching a video of a bottle of whiskey that I'm never going to own. So I want to be able to provide information, uh, provide a review on what I'm tasting, what I'm smelling, the, the impressions that I'm getting from a bottle and you saying, okay, that sounds good. I'm gonna go try that out, knowing it's a $25 bottle of whiskey that you can walk in anywhere and find. Um, and not something you're gonna be driving all over your city for uh, you know, hours to try and find and end up paying more than you were you know, anticipating spending. So uh, the goal is to not get the unicorns. My goal is to get the, the available ones 
and, and create a nice list of ones that you can go find and then hopefully you can do the same where you're buying different bottles and comparing them um, and comparing the notes that, that I have on them as well. For me, that's part of the fun is finding my tasting notes, what I'm getting out of it and sharing it with my friends and seeing what they get out of it because one person might get you know, banana out of something and another person may get leather and oak. So there's way, a, a, there's way different scales of, of flavor profiles that you can get um, and everybody's different and everybody tastes something different. So that's part of the fun for me and, and that's something that I'm hoping to bring to, to this podcast. Um, the other part is like the educational piece. There's such a deep background with bourbon, especially, and that's really how I got into it, was, was trying to learn about bourbon. And you know, when I started reading all these books, they were all bourbon-related books. Um, I found a, a um, certification program called Stave and Thief that are out of Kentucky, and they've got the a Certified Bourbon Steward Program and an Executive Bourbon Steward, uh, sorry, Executive Bourbon Steward um, the certified one, you know, you get the book, you study, take a test, put together a flight and you pass and you know, you're, you're a certified bourbon steward. The executive one, you have to actually go to Kentucky, you do classroom work and ex uh, work in a distillery for you know, a day or whatever, pass some tests and then you, know, you get the bigger certification. But um, that's a little bit out of my range right now, but the certified one was really interesting to me. So I took that, passed it, um, and just thought, man, there's so much information to learn about this. And it kind of made me want to get into it a little bit more. So um, talking to a friend of mine that's, that works with Teeling, he turned me on to the Society of Wine Educators. And looking through their website, um, they offer a lot of different certifications. And one of them is a Certified Specialist of Spirits. And I actually just found out that I got a scholarship for that program. So I'm going to be starting that up to obviously you know, use that information, hopefully pass that and increase my knowledge of, you know, all spirits more than what I have now. Um, it's going to be difficult for me because I don't have any knowledge of any, any sort of beverages outside of, you know, whiskey or Irish whiskey or, or bourbon because I don't drink them. I don't drink gin. I really don't drink vodka and I don't drink tequila. We had a bad breakup years ago and we've just never, uh, we've never made up since then. So, I stick to the ones I like um, and I study the ones that I like, but you know, that's going to be an opportunity for me to learn more about a lot of different ones. Um, in 2018, I went to Ireland with a couple of buddies of mine and you know, we, we toured a couple of distilleries there. We went and saw uh, Teeling, Tildemore Dew and Jameson, you know, and actually being there and seeing the process of it is fascinating and, and being able to get in there and look and see how this process goes where that's just the making part of it and not even just the, um, the distribution, uh, there's just so many parts to this that are just so interesting. The, the history of bourbon is, is amazing. It's, it's just, it coincides so strongly with the history of our country. Uh, the different events that happened in our country's history were, there was like an equal reaction in the bourbon industry. And it's really fun to put those together and, and see how those, how those work. The people involved in bourbon, the brand names, you know, the court cases, you know, I just read a book called Bourbon Justice and they go over the court cases over branding and marketing. And it's just, it's fascinating. It really is. And so it's an opportunity for me to nerd out about something that is, you know, not baseball related and it's something fun that I enjoy. And um, so my goal is to kind of share that with, with everybody else, um, you know, let people from the whiskey and baseball industry come on and hopefully they can, you know, share their love for it and share some stories, um, you know, and then also add in the bottle reviews and, and hopefully introduce people to some new whiskeys for them to try out and sample and, and hopefully enjoy as well. So um, every, every show I have, I'll make sure that there's notes from that podcast, from that episode that are put on my, um, on the website on barrelproofbaseball.com. Um, they'll go under the podcast section. There's a review section on the website that will have different bottle reviews with, you know, flavor profiles that I'm getting, hopefully other people that will also write in and give me their input so we can include that as well so you can get different um, different ideas for, for the same bottle because like I said everybody's gonna taste something different so there's also a store on there that's got you know our challenge coins it's got our Glen Karen glasses some stickers just some things if you, anybody wants to um, check those out this video right now is gonna first go out to the um, the donors from our Kickstarter I am blown away at how much support I've gotten from the Kickstarter campaign um, it's just, it's been unbelievable and this podcast would not be happening if it weren't for the people who donated to that Kickstarter. 
I'm unbelievably grateful for the generosity that people have shown me um, in that campaign. And it, it finishes on January 22nd. And, and as soon as the 22nd rolls around, I'm gonna be able to get some of those items and, and get them shipped out to people. And I really can't wait to do that as just a thank you for you know believing that this is something that's gonna be cool and hopefully fun and entertaining and, and uh, maybe a little educational. So, um, so this will go out to everybody that, that donated on the Kickstarter. The, every video from here on out will go to um, anybody on the Patreon, any of those members also, um, just to kind of give you an advanced look at it before it gets posted up on, up on YouTube for the public to, to see and uh, hopefully enjoy. So um, again, thank you so much for checking this out. Thank you for you know, those of you who, um, thank you to, to those of you who donated on the, the Kickstarter campaign. I, I, I really truly can't thank you enough. So when you see this on YouTube, like hit like, hit subscribe. Those are the things that are gonna kind of help me out and help me, you know, get the word out about um, about the podcast. Um, you know, leave comments on there. Hopefully they're positive. Hopefully they're talking about uh, how handsome I look. And if not, then that's fine. I'll, I'll deal with that accordingly. So again, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And I'm really looking forward to getting this started.